So, hello, Tony. I would like to ask you: uh, Have you been uh, in uh, build the barrack meetings uh, some last years? Yeah. Somewhere? Yes. Uh, well, my name's Tony Gosling, uh, and I have the website Bilderberg.org, which I got, got 20 years ago. Wow. Round about exactly 20 years ago, and um, this website is really about trying to document the origins of this group. Uh, I used to work for the BBC um, and in 1995, 96, when I first discovered Bilderberg, I was really annoyed because the coverage on the internet, the new internet as it was then, was very bad. A lot of it was anti-Semitic, uh, saying this is part of a Jewish conspiracy and this made me really angry. It, uh, this is nothing like that. It's, it's something much more powerful and it's really a, a way where the business leaders network in order to control the government. I had a conversation with the police the first night we were here. They didn't really know what Bilderberg was. They said, oh yes, it's Bilderberg, but they didn't know what the word meant. And I explained to them, well, uh, what it was. And, and, and they said, oh, so that means that when we vote, it won't change anything. <laughs> the police say that. So uh, the origins, I think, are, are interesting of this group. Uh, it's formed by uh, Joseph Rettinger, who's from uh, MI6, from the Second World War. He was involved in the death of General Sikorsky from Poland, for example. Uh, and uh, even the Polish resistance tried to poison Rettinger because he wasn't a patriotic Pole, uh, obviously, after the death of Sikorsky. And uh, th then also uh, there was Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Uh, he denied he was uh, a Nazi. He said, oh, I just did it because it was a fashion at the time. But actually he was one of the leading Nazis. He was a Nazi party member, one of the first ones, and he was one of the first officers in the SS as well when that was first formed. And that's since come out. So Bernhard was chairing this conference for 20 years, from 1954 uh, until 1975 with the Lockheed scandal. And a lot of people have asked me about the origins. What, why is it called the Bilderberg Group? Okay, well, it started at the Bilderberg Hotel in Oosterbeek, but why Oosterbeek in Holland? This was the, you know, the scene 10 years before the first meeting of uh, an enormous battle in World War II. In 1944, September 1944, uh, Operation Market Garden was the attempt by the Allies to liberate Holland, the biggest ever airborne parachute uh, attack there'd been. Three airborne divisions dropping in Eindhoven, in uh, Nijmegen and in Arnhem, the British first airborne division. Well, the operation was a good idea, but it's quite clear now it was sabotaged from within the British army. And they didn't want to get a bridgehead over the Rhine because that would have ended the war too quickly. People have been doing deals with the Nazis on the back channels during 1944 because they knew the Nazis had a tremendous amount of wealth. Some say about something like six billion dollars. In those days that was a lot of money uh, and they, they needed safe passage. They knew the war was going to finish fairly soon, that the, that the Nazis would lose and that the, some of the top Nazis would need some kind of help after the war. So there were people in the British side who were doing deals and uh, certainly the evidence is that Hitler's treasurer and Private Secretary Martin Bormann did survive the war. So that was why I think that the Arnhem operation was sabotaged by traitors within the British Army, people like Lord Carrington, who later became a chairman of Bilderberg. He was in that battle and he did not go and help his paratroop friends uh, in Arnhem, even though we now know if he'd have just uh, turned on his tank and driven, he could have saved the battle and taken a bridgehead over the Rhine. I also spoke to uh, guy called Major Tony Hibbert before he died. He was uh, the brigade major of the 1st Airborne Division at the bridge and he was really annoyed. He said we knew if those tanks had come to establish the bridgehead the war would have been finished by Christmas 1944. That's his actual words. So Oosterbeek, Arnhem is, uh, is, Oosterbeek is just a suburb of Arnhem. In Oosterbeek in, in 1944 there was surrounded the British were surrounded by the Germans and cut off and they were massacred, massacred. Thousands of British paratroopers were killed. They had uh, SS Panzer Division, the 9th SS Panzer Division attacking them. They had uh, naval Werfer, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, all of the might, heavy, heavy armor, armory from the German army against lightly armed paratroopers. It was a terrible massacre for the British army. And 
Uh, in German, uh, they call it the Hexenkessel. They nicknamed this place the Witch's Cauldron because so many British were being killed. And ten years after, in the same spot where the Bilderberg Hotel is, that's when the first Bilderberg meeting took place. So I think it's an in joke uh, in the Bilderberg. This is where the traitors from the Allies got together with the Nazis and made sure the war was extended long enough for them to get the wealth out of Germany to form a kind of mafia after the war. The United States, for example. Yes, but most of the wealth went to Switzerland and Argentina. Now, it was laundered after the war through the United States. Uh, Alan Dulles's law firm, he's a well-known CIA chief and Secretary of State as well. Uh, law firm called Sullivan and Cromwell was doing all the, well, a lot of the laundering of the Nazi money uh, after World War II. Somebody is coming out. Yeah. Ah, okay, there will be a lot of pictures. Well, is it really a Bilderberg? Oh, no, nobody knows. <laughs> this is one of the characteristics of the Bilderberg. Mm -hmm. It's very good. You have to have a sheet with everybody's face on mm -hmm. because the most powerful people in the world never go on TV. You never see their photos in the newspapers because the press is not doing its job. In fact, the press is in here. Sometimes the press is in here and they are sworn to secrecy. So their interest is in their own financial benefit and the success of their press empire, good relationship with the banks. They're not interested at all in the viewers and the listeners and the readers. So uh, which one was the first book that you visited? Me? Uh, oh, okay. This is 2000 mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Jean Val, uh, near Brussels in Belgium. Yeah. Uh, a similar situation to this where you can get very close to the building. Yeah. And but probably um, there was not uh, many people. No, <laughs> there was about three yeah. reporters. Yeah. yeah, very few. And uh, yeah, we went uh, to document it. But mm. uh, one of the guys I went with, he was friendly with uh, a former editor of a national newspaper in Belgium. One of his good friends mm. used to drink with. Him. And so on the Friday, he, no, sorry, on the Thursday when they all arrived, he phoned his friend. His friend got the train down. And he saw it all. Took some photographs. In the Saturday. It was the front page of the newspaper. Wow. <laughs> and on the Saturday, the whole Belgian press came down. Really, every channel, Flemish, everything. And uh, so they had a really bad time. They, this is why I think what we're doing here is important in any language. I don't care. We must let the mainstream press know that this is an important meeting that is deciding our future. And really, uh, they are grooming uh, politicians coming up through the system and they are interviewing them, vetting them. Yeah, so that they only want the politicians that are on side with their plans to come through. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you see any uh, progress, any difference between uh, uh, former Bilderberg uh, meetings and this one, which is uh, this year? Uh, Okay. Well, okay. The first and most important difference is the amount of coverage. It's now being covered by the mainstream press in most countries. Usually, usually they have a formula where they have one serious article and one spoof article. So they're saying, oh, this is just uh, where the lizards are gathering. Yeah. And making fun of it. Maybe it's aliens. And then they have another article which maybe is a bit more serious, looking at some, maybe three or four of the participants. One thing I've definitely seen which has changed, because this is largely a US origin, this organization, it was set up to influence Europe. Uh, Andreas von Bulow from uh, here in Germany, a former defense minister who went to Bilderberg, he said uh, that the purpose of it is to bring all the European embassies for America under one roof, because they're fed up with dealing with 30 different countries. They want to deal with one country and tell one country what to do, not 30. It's too difficult for them. So that's one of the purposes he said this is for. But he also said that, that this is a kind of trap for politicians. So you can bring a politician in, and as they speak, you're listening very carefully. If they say the wrong thing, like, for example, against the policy of the Pentagon, their name will be written down, and they will be removed from power. A simple trap for politicians. So I think it does. Uh, we see more and more. I know it from my country also. 
Yeah. Well, uh, I was in Bodenberg in uh, London 2013 and in uh, Switzerland 2011 and uh, I see the difference that uh, here today is uh, very easy to uh, capture than uh, on the video of the Yeah, some, sometimes they don't like it, sometimes they don't mind. I mean, it depends on the venue. Uh, really, the, the, it's not too difficult to get them though, because even if they are far away, usually you can find a long lens, mm -hmm. telephoto lens, and you can find them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's very clear this year though, mm -hmm. it's very interesting that all the, the king of the Netherlands is coming in the front door. Yeah, the Henry Kissinger is coming in the front door. Jeffrey yeah. Petraeus, Lagarde. But the people who are going around the back is the European Union finance minister. So why is that? You have to ask yourself. These are these are the finance ministers, some of the most important people in European countries, but they're going to the tradesmen around the bank. So for the uh, people that clean the rubbish, go around there. Yeah. So why is that? They, I think it's because we may have some big financial problems coming, and when they do come, they don't want the photographs of these people coming arriving for the Bilderberg meeting because they may make a connection between the financial crisis and the Bilderberg. Well, uh, do you see uh, any difference of uh, their influence? In the, uh, yes. I think the one, one of the biggest changes has been the increase in all their tech firms over the years. They are, they are obsessed with controlling the internet. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's important that people are aware. The internet is a web, they call it the web, and you can get stuck on the web and then there may be a spider like Kissinger will come and grab you. He's kind of gathering much data together. This is, uh, this is one of the things they're discussing. Yeah, because they are data mining. So this is stealing data from the cloud. Any data that you put outside of your own PC is going to be possibly stolen by these guys. And they're creating a profile database really for the whole world, even children. And what's happened is this is illegal. And so they're trying to change the law keep up with the technology so what they're doing becomes legal. They're doing this in Britain, it's called the Snooker's Charter. But this is a very dangerous precedent because back in the Second World War, IBM helped Adolf Hitler to collect this massive amount of information on people and then it was used to single out ethnic groups, you know, the Jews for example, communists etc. and to send the Gestapo around to arrest them. So there is a great deal of uh, importance in privacy and these guys are doing everything they can to destroy privacy completely so everything we do is transparent for them uh, so we've got also companies like LinkedIn LinkedIn is used by millions of people across the world uh, to get a new job it's a good way to get a job but these people are inside with the builder uh, also Google is now boasting well Google don't but uh, the United States the people looking at Google are saying that they can even possibly decide an election. They can make an approval rating of a candidate rise 13% above mm. the normal, and they can make an, the disapproval rating of a candidate they don't like go down 25%, depending on the search algorithm. So uh, Google is becoming a, almost like a 1984 machine where we can control what you think. And this is extremely dangerous. And these guys want to control the media more than, I think, anything else. They already control the banking system, and the press is the biggest thing they fear. That's why we're here. One more question. Uh, do you know that this, uh, it's somewhere in, uh, inside the Bilberg, there are some insiders who can uh, put some information out? <laughs> yeah, because two years ago, Sometimes somebody, somebody will read something, well, look, uh, some secretly, yeah. Good question. We, uh, uh, someone like Andreas von Bulo or Will Hunt, these are people who have been invited to Bilderberg and were not impressed. So those are the kinds of people. Also, I think the European Union finance ministers are the most interesting people for us to talk to. So if your Czech finance minister is in there, go and find him, ask him about this, because some of them are really resistant 
to what the Bilderberg is trying to do. The Bilderberg represents a private finance group, IMF and uh, the private, the most powerful HSBC, uh, Deutsche Bank, the big private bank. And they are putting a lot of pressure on the, the public finance. For example, when we were in Versailles in uh, 2003, the Greek finance minister came out of the big Bilderberg meeting. He said, in fact, uh, the guards searched him in his pockets and everything before they allowed him to carry and he said the reason I'm coming out is because the atmosphere is terrible in there and also the, the, uh, it's really oppressive and also because the cigarettes are too expensive. I want to get some proper priced cigarettes outside. And he sat down and had a chat with us in the coffee shop. Really nice guy, actually. And uh, so I think we as journalists need to understand we need to support our public representatives with the Bilderberg sending in the back way and trying to pretend that they're not there. These guys need actually us to support them because I think the, the Bilderberg is trying to bully them, to cajole them into taking the wrong route. The route that's good for profits, for private profit, but bad for the public. For me, it's everything. So thank you very much. Okay, can I just give my website? Yes, thisweek.org.uk. We do a radio show every week in Bristol and you can download the podcast. We did a show live from here, so you can hear much more uh, this week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe next year. I hope so. Okay. Inshallah. <laughs>